types of hormones. So hormones is a pretty general category because again, the definition is something that travels throughout the bloodstream, a chemical messenger that travels throughout the bloodstream. So I wanna start with a introductory video to the types of hormones. There's three main categories. And then I'll talk about each one in a separate video after that. So before actually talking about the types of hormones, I wanna talk about two categories they're gonna fall into. So you already know that signaling molecules can either bind to a membrane, um, a membrane bound receptor protein or a receptor that's inside the cell. So an intracellular receptor. So here I have two cells drawn and I'm gonna draw the location of receptors either intracellular that's when there is a receptor inside the cell. What is this thing here? Is this a hormone? No, this is a protein that's a receptor, right? Receptors are proteins. It's inside the cell. There's also receptors that can be outside of the cell. And this we saw more in, often in the fall. I'm gonna point to that. What are some types of cell membrane receptors? There were two types. One were ionotropic. These were ion channels that just opened and allowed ions through. This was very common in the nervous system. We're gonna see this some this semester, but more often and definitely more with hormones, with the endocrine system, we're gonna see the other type of cell membrane receptor, which is what? G protein coupled. So here's a G protein that is coupled or linked to this cell membrane receptor. It's going to start a signal cascade. A second messenger will be signaled and that's gonna have lots of effects. Could open ion channels, activate other enzymes, could alter gene expression. So this here is our nucleus. Hope that was obvious. This is inside the cell, outside the cell. So that's what happens with cell membrane receptors. So when a hormone binds to a cell mem membrane receptor, it can signal that pathway. Hormones could also bind to an intracellular receptor. That means it's gonna go through the cell membrane and bind to a, a receptor that's inside the cell. This receptor is typically then gonna go inside the nucleus and activate gene expression. These are two different mechanisms depending on where the receptors for those hormones are located. And the reason I'm bringing this up first is because the hormone, the properties of the hormone determine where it can bind to a receptor. So can the hormone go through the plasma membrane or does it have to bind to a cell membrane receptor because it cannot go through the cell membrane? You should be thinking already about what would make a signaling molecule be able to pass through the cell membrane. It would have to be hydrophobic and small. So here are the three types of hormones. One is peptides slash proteins. Um, so peptides are links of amino acids. Either way, and, and then if those get long enough linked, they become proteins. We'll go into these more in a minute. Um, but these are large, made up of multiple amino acids that are either like nine of them. This is actually nine amino acids, or this one is, I don't know, a bunch, hundreds nine to 100 amino acid, hundreds. Can these pass through the cell membrane, do you think? No, so they're gonna bind to cell membrane receptors. Then we've got amino acid derivatives. So amino acid, that word's here too, but instead of being a link of amino acids, like peptide bonds linking them, these are derivatives of single amino acids. So um, for example, Epinephrine is a derivative of, um, shoot, blanking. I'll come back to it with the next, 
Oh, tyrosine, that's it. Tyrosine is an amino acid. One tyrosine can be derived into epinephrine versus linked tyrosine, more tyrosine, leucine, serine. Those are all amino acids that can make up a peptide. Amino acid derivatives also typically bind to cell membrane receptors. I say typically because there's one exception. This is the exception. We'll get to that in a moment, but these are um, not hydrophobic or small enough. I believe they're actually um, too hydrophilic. So these are going to also bind to cell membrane receptors. Basically what you should do is remember steroids, these are derivatives of cholesterol and that cholesterol is a lipid, right? These are small, fairly small, small enough and hydrophobic so they can pass through the cell membrane. So these are the three categories and um, I'll go through each one. First, I wanna to bring together the last two slides in one picture. So this is kind of a summary of the three. Doo -doo. Here we go very simplified schematic of where they bind. Polypeptides and peptides, and that would be proteins, right? If they're long enough and fold up, bind to cell membrane receptors. Amino acid derivatives besides thyroid hormone, bind to cell membrane receptors. Notice this is molecule smaller than this one. Steroids and thyroid hormone are going to bind to intracellular receptors. So understanding the properties of these is gonna help us understand their function, structure function, right? Um, so we will look at each of these three briefly to better understand each of them. 